Music. Imagine embarking on a cross-country journey. Your first step would be to select your destination and then acquire a roadmap to chart the optimal route. Similarly, in life, once you've defined your values, vision, mission, and goals, the next crucial step is assessing your starting point. Where are you now in relation to where you want to be? Jack Welch, the former CEO of General Electric, emphasized the importance of the reality principle in leadership. It involves seeing the world as it truly is, not as you wish it to be. This principle prompts us to ask, what's the reality, before tackling any goal or problem? Similarly, Peter Drucker highlighted the significance of intellectual honesty, facing facts objectively before making decisions. Self-awareness is key. Abraham Maslow noted that self-actualizing individuals possess the ability to be brutally honest and objective with themselves. To achieve your fullest potential, you must accurately assess your current status in various life areas relative to your goals. For instance, if your goal is weight loss, start by weighing yourself to establish your baseline. Similarly, in pursuing financial goals, determine your current income, hourly rate, and net worth. This clear assessment serves as a foundation for progress. Consider adopting a zero-based thinking approach. Ask yourself, knowing what I know now, would I make the same choices again? Apply this not only to your actions but also to relationships, work, and investments. Be honest about what's working and what isn't. Your earning ability is a valuable asset. Continuously invest in developing your skills and capabilities. Identify your key result areas and focus on improving your weakest skill sets. Be willing to challenge yourself and your circumstances. Imagine starting your career anew. What would you choose to do differently? In strategic planning, ask fundamental questions. Where are we now? Where do we want to be? How did we get here? What do we do now? Honest answers to these questions form the basis of effective planning and decision making. Remember, a well-begun journey is halfway to success. By honestly evaluating your current situation and adjusting your course as needed, you'll accelerate your progress toward your goals. Music. Our perception of the world is shaped by what psychologists call our interpretive style. This style is essentially the lens through which we interpret things to ourselves. If we alter this interpretation, our attitude towards everything changes. Additionally, every individual possesses a self-concept, akin to a thermostat, which functions as their operating system. Everything we manifest externally is influenced, modified, or affected in some way by our self-concept. Changing what's external requires a shift in our internal operating system. Our outward behavior always reflects our internal thoughts. The law of belief posits that our beliefs shape our realities. While these beliefs may not always align with objective truth, intense belief can make them true for us. Similarly, the law of attraction suggests that we attract into our lives people and circumstances in harmony with our thoughts and expectations. Our expectations often manifest as self-fulfilling prophecies. Confident expectation is a hallmark of highly successful individuals. They expect to succeed more than they fail, consistently anticipating progress. Our expectations shape our realities. What we experience externally is determined by our internal thoughts. One of the most critical principles is challenging our self-limiting beliefs. We are often plagued by beliefs that falsely portray us as limited in some way. However, this isn't true at all. Ernest Holmes, the renowned metaphysician, once said that all negativity essentially stems from the frustration of potential. Nelson Mandela echoed this sentiment, emphasizing that our greatest problem lies not in feeling powerless, but in failing to recognize our immense power. Improvement in personal performance begins with enhancing our self-concept and beliefs about ourselves. Our self-concept predicts our levels of performance and effectiveness in everything we do. Our self-concept is subjective, influenced by the information we accept as real. It encompasses various aspects of our lives, and each of us harbors self-concepts for different areas. Notably, our self-concept regarding income is significant, often defining our comfort zone. Raising our financial thermostat involves challenging this self-concept level of income. It's pivotal to break free from compensatory behaviors and embrace positive change. Our self-concept comprises three main parts. The self-ideal, self-image, and self-esteem. Clarifying our goals and values, visualizing ourselves positively, and nurturing high self-esteem are essential components of personal growth. 
Overcoming fears of failure and rejection is paramount for high performance. The more we like ourselves, the less we fear failure and rejection. Positive self-talk and a constructive mindset play crucial roles in boosting self-esteem and reducing fears. Ultimately, striving for excellence reinforces and supports our self-esteem. Setting high goals creates a positive feedback loop, driving us toward success. Upgrading our self-esteem in every area of life is key to achieving extraordinary things. Uplifting others simultaneously uplifts ourselves, highlighting the interconnectedness of human relations. To achieve high performance, we must confront and overcome our fears of failure and rejection. Positive self-talk empowers us to think, feel, and act positively, elevating our self-esteem and diminishing our fears. One of the traits of high achievers is that, at a certain juncture in their careers, they opt for excellence. They resolve to excel in their endeavors, willing to make any sacrifice and invest any amount of time needed to master their chosen fields. This decision propels them ahead of the pack of average performers, elevating them into income brackets where they earn significantly more than their peers who haven't made a similar commitment. Early in my sales career, I learned about the 80-20th rule applied to sales. 20% of salespeople generate 80% of the revenue, leaving the remaining 80% to divide the remaining 20% amongst themselves. Hearing this, I resolved to be among the top 20% rather than the bottom 80%. This choice transformed my life, despite grappling with a challenging upbringing and receiving subpar grades in school. I once viewed myself as an average or below average performer in any role I undertook. Then, one day, I had a sudden realization. Every individual in the top 10% of their field once occupied the bottom 10%. This revelation shifted my perspective entirely. Everyone who is thriving today was once struggling. Every individual at the forefront of life's buffet line started at the back. What's more, I came to realize that whatever others have achieved, within reason, I can accomplish as well. This holds true for nearly everyone. No one inherently surpasses you, and no one is inherently smarter than you. People excel in different areas, and all business skills are learnable. Those succeeding in business have learned essential skills, often alongside others, before you. If you're not achieving what others are, it simply means you haven't yet acquired these skills. This was another breakthrough realization for me. You can learn anything needed to achieve your goals. The only limits are those you place on your own mind and imagination. Deciding to excel, to join the top 10% in your field, is achievable. The only thing that can stop you is yourself. It won't be easy, of course. Everything worthwhile takes time and effort, but it's possible if you're dedicated enough. To achieve something new, you must become someone new. To have more, you must first be more. The fact that countless individuals have risen from the bottom to the top in every field proves that you can do it too. Hard work and dedication, rather than innate talent, lead to excellence and great success. An analysis of the Forbes 400 revealed that dropping out of high school and making it into this elite group often resulted in greater wealth than completing college. This dispels the myth that poor academic performance permanently limits success. Some of the wealthiest individuals did poorly in school. Just as you eat an elephant one bite at a time, you become excellent at what you do step by step. Your current level of knowledge and skill is becoming obsolete faster than ever before. Your earning ability can appreciate or depreciate, depending on whether you upgrade it or allow it to become obsolete. When you aggressively upgrade your knowledge and skills, it's like being in a race where you're the only one really running. Most of your competitors are strolling along, doing just enough to keep their jobs. The idea of committing to excellence hasn't occurred to them as it has to you. You begin your journey to excellence by asking what additional knowledge, skills, and information you need to lead your field in the future. Project yourself forward three to five years and imagine being among the best and highest paid people in your industry. Consider what would have to happen, what you'd have to learn or accomplish to reach that point. Once upon a time, I had a good friend who was a lawyer in a small firm. He eventually transitioned to a career in business, attending Harvard University's MBA program and becoming a successful executive. It's estimated that today's average worker will have multiple jobs and careers, continually evolving as they grow and mature. You must constantly look ahead and consider the skills and competencies needed to achieve your desired level of success. Every job consists of key result areas, and grading yourself in these areas can provide valuable insights for improvement. 
Your weakest key skill sets the height of your income and determines your career trajectory. The highest paid individuals in every field excel across all key result areas. If you're in management, mastering planning, organizing, staffing, delegating, supervising, measuring, and reporting is crucial. Weakness in any of these areas can hinder your success. Identify your weakest key result area and focus on improving it to achieve mastery. Then, identify the next skill to develop and work on it until you achieve mastery in that area as well. Continuous improvement is key to success in any field. I've worked with managers who were so poor at delegating that they couldn't get anything done. Eventually, they had to be fired because of the damage they were causing to the rest of the business. Give yourself a grade of 1 to 10 in each of these key result areas. Have people around you grade you as well, and be honest. Speak the truth rather than a diplomatic answer from a polite coworker. One popular management tool being used today is called a 360-degree analysis. In this type of analysis, a survey is given to several people who report to a particular manager. The survey is filled out anonymously, and all the surveys are returned to an outside consultant who summarizes the answers. This summary is then given to the manager so that he or she can see how they are perceived by others. It often comes as quite a shock to the manager. For example, they might believe they make careful and thoughtful decisions, but the staff might perceive them as weak, indecisive, and insecure when it comes to decision making. In a recent management study, 75% of all managers rated themselves in the top 25% of effectiveness. Most managers also rated themselves in the top 20% in terms of personality and intelligence. We have a natural tendency to rate ourselves highly, regardless of the actual quality or characteristic. This is why it's helpful for a person to be rated by their peers on a regular basis. Once you have determined the key result area where you want and need to improve the most, you set it as a goal, make a plan, determine a standard, and set a deadline. Then, you go to work to improve yourself in that area every day. In a week, a month, or a year, you will look back and be absolutely excellent in that skill area. You will have become an expert. Accept yourself the way you are. One of the most popular business books in recent years is called, First, Discover Your Strengths. This book follows from an earlier bestseller, First, Break All the Rules. The common conclusion of both of these books is that people don't change. They are born with certain natural skills and abilities tendencies, strengths, weaknesses, and talents emerge in early life and usually crystallize in your late teens. They do not change very much over the course of your lifetime. One of the most important things you can do in your career is to identify what you are really good at or what you can become good at, and then put your whole heart into becoming excellent in that area. Mary Baker Follett, a management consultant in the 1920s, once wrote, the very best direction to ride a horse is in the direction it is going. Similarly, the very best way to develop yourself is in the direction of your natural talents and interests. Jim Cathcart, the author and speaker, says, nurture your nature. This is extremely important advice that you should follow throughout your career. You are put on this earth with special talents and abilities that make you unique and different from all other people who have ever lived. Throughout your life, you have often found yourself in an area of activity where your special talents and abilities have enabled you to accomplish more and enjoy what you are doing at a higher level than anything else you could do. One of your great goals in life is to identify and isolate the one or two things that you can do better and enjoy more than anything else, and then concentrate on becoming absolutely excellent in those areas. Michael Jordan, the basketball player, once said, Everybody has talent, but ability takes hard work. The poet Longfellow once wrote, The great tragedy of the average man is that he goes to his grave with his music still in him. You could struggle for years at a job for which you were ill-suited, and then find yourself in the perfect field and make more progress in a couple of years than you had made in the 20 years preceding. Napoleon Hill once wrote that the key to success in America is for you to find out what you really love to do, and then find a way to make a good living doing it. Most self-made millionaires say, I never worked a day in my life. What they did was to find out what they really enjoyed, and then they did more and more of it. There are eight ways for you to identify and determine your special talents and what you are uniquely suited to do. Here they are. You will always be the best and happiest at something that you love to do. If you could afford it, you would do it without pay. It brings out the very best in you, and you get a tremendous amount of satisfaction and enjoyment when you are engaged in that particular work. You do it well. 
You seem to have a natural ability to perform in this area. This talent has been responsible for most of your success and happiness in life up until now. From an early age, it is something that you have enjoyed doing, and from which you got the greatest rewards and compliments from other people. It is something that was easy for you to learn and easy to do. In fact, it was so easy to learn that you actually forgot when and how you learned it. You suddenly find yourself effortlessly and proficiently engaged in it. One day, it captivates your attention, absorbing and fascinating you. You enjoy contemplating, reading, discussing, and learning about it. It attracts you like a moth to a flame. You have an enduring inner desire to excel in this specific area throughout your life. When you're engaged in it, time seems to stand still, allowing you to work for long periods without rest. You deeply admire and respect others who excel in this area. If these descriptions resonate with anything you're currently doing or have done in the past, they may guide you toward your unique purpose in life. Your natural talents are innate and easily developed, ingrained in your subconscious. Your task is to uncover this area of natural talent and nurture it throughout your life. Many skills complement each other, requiring proficiency in one to utilize others effectively. Sometimes, you must develop skills you don't particularly love to excel in your chosen field. Remember, you could be only one skill away from doubling your productivity, performance, and income. Business skills are learnable, not genetically predetermined. If a skill is crucial to you, you can learn it through dedication and practice. Avoid falling into the trap of learned helplessness by acknowledging that initial clumsiness and awkwardness are part of the journey to excellence. Use the magic wand technique to envision mastering the skill, setting new goals accordingly. Commit to lifelong self-improvement, investing time and effort to excel in critical areas. Utilize the 3 plus 1 formula for mastering any skill. Read daily, listen to educational audio programs, attend seminars and workshops, and practice what you learn promptly. Resolve to join the top 10% in your field by emulating their knowledge and skills. Understand that anything achievable by others is within your reach with sufficient determination and effort. There are no limits to what you can achieve with the right goals and dedication. There seems to be a direct relationship between self-discipline and success in every part of life. So, how do you discipline yourself? You make a list of everything you have to do during the day, set priorities on your list, and then start on your most important task first thing. In time management, the number one reason people don't succeed is because they can't discipline themselves to do the planning, preparation, and hard work necessary. Just select your most important task and work on it single-mindedly. It will double, triple, and even quintuple the quality and quantity of your output, productivity, and eventually your income. This is one of the most powerful of all time management techniques. This means that when you start a task, you don't do anything else until that task is complete. Task completion motivates you to complete more tasks, and the bigger the task you complete, the happier you feel and the more motivated you are to complete even bigger tasks. This is one of the great secrets of success known by top people. How do you practice visualization? You create clear, vivid, exciting, emotional pictures of your goals as if they were already a reality. Be your goal as if it were already achieved. Imagine yourself enjoying the accomplishment of the goal. In visualizing, take a few moments to create the emotions that would accompany the successful achievement of your goal. We say, get the feeling. If you would be proud and happy, visualize it. Visualization is perhaps the most powerful faculty available to help you achieve your goals faster than you ever thought possible. When you use a combination of clear goals combined with visualization and emotionalization, you activate your superconscious mind. Your superconscious mind is perhaps the most powerful faculty you have available to you. It activates the law of attraction and begins attracting into your life people, circumstances, ideas, and resources that will help you achieve your goals even faster. The incredible thing about goal mastery is that it's really life mastery. The sooner you begin to develop successful habits, the sooner you'll reap the financial, personal, and professional rewards that go along with them. Practice and repetition over time can override bad habits with good habits. There are some habits that are good to have because they make things automatic and easy. You don't even have to think about them. Ed Foreman said, the rule of success. Good habits are hard to form but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to form but hard to live with. And the rule is to form good habits and make them your masters. So, what you say to yourself matters.
If you had a habit of being punctual, a habit of planning every day in advance, you would serve your life surprisingly well. Look around and find really successful people. They had these habits, and nobody had them to start with. With regard to habits, everything is hard before it's easy. The reason people do not develop good habits is that they're lazy and undisciplined. They simply cannot stick to it until the habit locks in and becomes automatic and easy. Once the habit is locked in, it's easier to do it than not to do it because it becomes your new comfort zone. Discipline is the master key to riches, and this is really the most important key of all. It's the ability to discipline yourself to do it whether you feel like it or not, to just keep on keeping on until it becomes a habit. Every step you take toward becoming more disciplined actually raises your self-esteem and self-confidence and makes it easier for you to take the next step. It's the foundation skill that makes everything possible. If you develop discipline, you can accomplish anything in life. For the rest of your life, whether you're a college graduate learning new skills or a business owner, discipline is essential. Remember, you become what you say to yourself. You become what you think about. You become what you teach. So, practice an attitude of confident expectations. Everything that's happening in your life is part of a big plan to make you a big success. So, have this attitude that everything that's happening is part of that plan.